metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis or MASH has become the leading cause of chronic liver disease and is projected to become the most frequent indication for liver transplant by 2030. MASH can lead to cirrhosis and in compensated cirrhosis, liver function and individuals may feel and experience no symptoms at all. Welcome everyone, this is Dr. Valentin here at Houston Metropolitan Medical. We need to discuss why the liver is so important. The liver is the largest gland in our body and it plays many roles in our body from storing sugars, processing nutrients and waste, uh, products like bilirubin, producing clotting factors that prevent us from bleeding out when we cut ourselves or injure ourselves. It produces bile that helps us absorb nutrients from what we eat. It also uh, helps with sugar metabolism to provide energy to our body and also metabolizes medications that are need to be switched um, inside our liver to be able to become active and work throughout our body and also gets rid of toxins. So how does MASH affect us? So MASH is an inflammatory process that can affect your liver cells. And cirrhosis is when inflammation of the liver leads to degeneration of those liver cells and scarring. Cirrhosis can result from a wide range of diseases, like, for example, viral diseases like hepatitis C, autoimmune diseases, drug-induced diseases, and metabolic diseases like, for example, hemochromatosis, where your body uh, accumulates iron in and stores it in your liver and can lead to inflammation and cirrhosis of your liver. Hepatitis C used to be the most common cause of chronic liver disease, but in 2015, that all changed. Now, MASH has become the leading cause of chronic liver disease. So what is MASH? Although we do not know how MASH develops, we do know patients go through a previous stage called metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, or MASLD. This is characterized by uh, excessive accumulation of fat in the liver, accompanied by a metabolic disturbance such as obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes, and or high blood pressure. So who is at risk? About 30% of Americans, adults have MSLD, and about 20 to 30% of obese people have MASH. So all patients who are overweight, have diabetes, or high level of triglycerides or cholesterol, should have their liver enzymes checked at least once a year. And they have elevated liver enzymes um, or possible fat in the liver based on ultrasound imaging or any other type of imaging, the next step is to distinguish between MSLD and MASH. So how do we do that? Although biopsy is the most accurate way to distinguish MSLD from MASH, there are other non-invasive tests that we can perform. Like for example, there's a FIB4 score, which is a simple calculation from routine blood tests um, that help us identify an individual at high risk for significant fibrosis. If we hit a threshold with this FIB4 score, we decide to order a liver elastography, uh, which helps us determine how much fibrosis is in the liver. So how do we treat MASH and MSLD? So we recommend making lifestyle changes, which include eating a healthy diet and exercising. Losing a total of 10% of your body weight may reduce fat and inflammation in your liver and potentially regress scarring of your liver as well. An important thing to keep in mind is that MASH is reversible. Patients should limit or avoid alcohol altogether. In the past, there used to be no FDA-approved medications to help patients achieve these goals, but recently, Wegovi was approved in August 2025 for adults with MASH and moderate to advanced fibrosis. At 72 weeks, Wegovi demonstrated 63% of their patients achieved a resolution of MASH and no worsening of liver fibrosis. And also, 37% of patients improved in liver fibrosis and no worsening of MASH. So now that you've started your journey into weight loss, increasing physical activity, how do we follow up? So um, we do surveillance. Liver function tests should be assessed regularly. Uh, liver ultrasound should be done every six months to make sure that we don't develop hepatocellular carcinoma as we discussed earlier. Cirrhosis is a risk factor 
um, and not just so all causes of cirrhosis are a risk factor for developing hepatocellular carcinoma. And also, um, surveillance of liver fibrosis with the elastography should be done every one to two years. So we have gone over what MSLD and MASH are and their risk factors. We went over how to evaluate MSLD and how to distinguish it from MASH. We also went over the treatment guidelines and medication that can potentially help you. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to keep up to date with our most recent videos. Thank you, and until next time.